Hi, this is a book review of the 10 best books I have ever read on grief. It's actually one of the questions I get the most often. What books do you recommend? So I've gathered 10 <laughs> and uh, I'll be doing short book reviews. They're not the form, the, the first one is not the one you should absolutely read. So there, I kind of pick them randomly but they are definitely the best books I have ever read and um, on that subject. And let you know a little secret, I've read a lot of grief books and they're not all good. So I'm giving you the best of the best. Uh, welcome. All right. So the first book is a classic by Joan Didion, a sharp writer of her time who's lost her husband. Her writing is just so poignant and so raw. This book is special to me. It was given to me by my sister-in-law who um, lived in New York. John Didion is from New York. And shortly after Tommy passed away, uh, Hannah was like, you gotta read this book. It's a, a classic. And she was right. And now my sister-in-law passed away as well. So um, this book has a bit sentimental value, although the inside, I just love how John Joan Didion, she, there's something really stunning and so simple. <laughs> like her writing is so simple, almost it catch you, like you become breathless when you uh, you read it. She talks a lot about, you know, the fact that like a minute everything is okay and the other minute everything is just wrong. Um, and it's such, um, just such a real look on, on grief. Um, and I love the title of her book because her book is so real. And then she goes titling the book, you know, the year of magical thinking. So, um, yeah, I strongly, strongly recommend it's, you know, it's a short read. Um, it looks beautifully at the lens of grief from, you know, a family point of view and, um, and get it on your shelf. All right, the next one is The Beauty of Wet Remains by Steve Ledger, who is a rabbi. Uh, this is not a book that will convert you into becoming uh, Jewish or anything. And it's one I've uh, shared before on Instagram. And uh, this book is just so, I just love how humbling grief can become just as a process like, um, you know, one thing now that I'm really understanding, like, I think when we're plunged into grief, one way to heal ourselves is to understand it. And, you know, as a rabbi and someone that needed to honor, you know, families for such a long time through the process of grief and thinking he knew so much about grief, you know, and kind of, he was really kind of unfazed by the whole thing because he would carry, you know, families and lead, you know, grief uh you know i don't want to say ritual but but you know he would he would host people and then his dad passed away <laughs> and then the shit hits the fan uh as you say and it's just his realization just how um yeah just how when you actually live it just how different it is than than when you you think you know you know what it is um I love this book because there's something very liberating about his writing and something, again, there's something really humbling, like you don't need to know it all. And there's lots of great tips and advice. And, um, <laughs> and I mean, one of the best ones and one that I reiterate all the time is, you know, that expression that when something just terrible and tragic happens, one of the first one comment that I even used to have, and he tells, there's a whole chapter on this, how it's like the most horrible thing to be told. I can't imagine what you're going through. I remember like people would tell me this, but really well-intentioned. And I would always be like, can you sit with that for a minute? Like you, you can't imagine, like you don't want to, for me, it was a complete rejection of what I, you know, was, was feeling. And the whole chapter on this, you know, when he talks to it, it was just so 
It was like, oh, I'm not like, I'm not ridiculous here. This is like a thing within the community of bereaved parents. It's like the most awful thing that, you know, someone could, could tell you. Um, and like, how should we be? I think it's like when somebody else says, you know, experiences such a tragedy, it's like, just be who you were before that happened. Like you don't need to change. <laughs> Um, so it's so authentic and just so, uh, it's funny at times. This book is funny. The guy's so funny and just so human. There's such a great humanity in this book. It's filled with stories. And um, so, yeah. Okay, next we have The Beauty and Breaking by Michelle Harper. Um, this book is not specifically on grief, um, but her story really is about letting shit go. Um, and there was a lot of like allowing yourself to feel a certain way without being right and without being wrong. And I just love this book as a memoir. I think sometimes memoir, um, there's so many tips and advice in memoir and the way that they can be just so relatable. And so like grief is so complex, so nuanced, so complicated, so personal. And, and when you get to have a story within a story and she talks about her patients too, so we get an extra layer. Um, really feels enriching to the soul. And this book was really, 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 really that. Um, it's such a quick read too. Like you're just devouring this book and you want to know at the end. Uh, there was lots of hope in this book as well. And, and just how to cope with awful things that can, can, that can happen to us and that you know, all of it is valid. So uh, Michelle Harper, it's like her first uh, novel. And uh, and I really recommend this book um, if you're dealing with any loss. All right, the next book is like a completely <laughs> different style uh, than the three that were more like memoir-ish books. Um, this one, The Smell of Dust on, A uh, Rain on Dust, Grief and Praise, Martin uh, Pretzel. And this book is very prose-like and it, it completely chattered me in that uh, it gave, gave me a new lens on, on grief that I had not seen before. Meaning, I love it when, when books give me another discourse, one that I've I have not, you know, seen on, on grief and I had never seen grief as praise. What do you mean? <laughs> um, and I mean, this author really owns it when he speaks. It's very hard, not harsh, but it's like he owns, you know, everything that he says about, um, about grief. There's, um, beautiful scribbles in that book. I love when, oh, I just love when books have like art in them and scribbles in them and poetry in them. Um, because grief is not something ever rational as much as books are rational and you can you know, understand, you know, books can take you at another level in a way of understanding. But, you know, there was, something very, you know, when there's, again, when there's like imagery or poetry, it really brings you into your, your heart and feelings and, and emotion. Um, and this was the ultimate, like make beauty out of grief, like make something out of your grief and feel the heck out of your grief. And there's a beautiful passage that speaks about the length at which people will not want to grieve. And I just want to read it quick because, um, it's incredible. And it says um, about what the living should be doing when someone dies will so widely and emotionally defend the unemotional flatness and spiritual vacuum they have come to live in and accept a repressed lack of expression as a normal existence coming to its defense with more energy than it would actually take to have a tangibly good custom of storytelling, weeping and active grief as if such sanity were some backward barbary. 
Um, it speaks of our ancestors. It speaks of our, you know, um, he turns it like the metabolization of grief into beauty, like to gather all your grief and put all that energy somewhere is what really, really, really spoke to me. Um, I was in Spain when I wrote that book. I was recovering from a France retreat, kind of resting, and I gulped this book down like no other. Um, and I really, really recommend it for a fresh look on grief. All right, another kind of memoir like, okay, this one, this book has been run to the ground. My dear friend, Kate Inglis, A Field Guide to Grief, that I couldn't call a friend when I first read this book on a plane to Costa Rica about three years ago. Um, of course, this book talks to me because it's specifically, she specifically lost one of her twin, one of her baby. Um, and I don't know if I could even feel kind of her more only because she's from here in Nova Scotia from the South Shore and um this book is so beautiful and there's something and she would allow me to say this um I've actually did a three-part podcast about this book specifically a conversation on grief with Kate Inglis on Cheap West podcast um so and I take part of this book we literally take this book apart so if you want to know more about this book just check out the podcast but um you know, there's something really dark and twisted about grief. <laughs> and, you know, she she's really able um, not to twist it around, but to let it, live it live. Um, and then to let yourself, you know, that work of integration. That's a really great book to, and I mentioned this in the podcast where I love that she took her grief, the way the book is set up is like year one, year two, year three. Um, which feels really monumental for me when I look at my own grief, that, that word for me in my head. Um, and again, to bring something, you know, grief so messy to have a bit of that structured kind of really help for her book. There's stunning poetry in there and, uh, oh yeah, get this book and support local authors. Okay, so I kind of put this book in the middle because <laughs> it was so important. I didn't want it to be the first one and I don't want it to be the last one. Uh, Frances Weller, who has been, after reading this book, I took tons of workshops with them. They're like these lectures you can listen to. They're, they're like 10 at the time. Um, and this is the book that was like, I'm a grief activist. That's what I am. That's what I've been on earth. I've been placed on earth to do but this guy literally took like something I couldn't put words to and he finally put the words to the things that were in my head um he speaks of five gates of grief um and if you still cannot wrap your head around grief being something else than losing someone then I would definitely recommend you to read this book um, because, you know, he speaks of grief as like all the parts of our bodies that we don't love. That's grief. He talks about the soul, the world, he, you know, the environmental catastrophe as grief. He talks about an ancestral, you know, uh, grief, like things that your ancestors have lived that have not been, the cycles have, been, have not been, you know, um, ended. So you're living with that grief now. Um, I mean, he speaks about so much and the importance for me and that was like the importance of ritual and the importance of being witness that, that made that clear for me. Like you cannot heal in a vacuum. You cannot heal by yourself. Um, and you know, you, that, that quote that I use all the time is from that book, you know, um, you know, you're your grief is an energy waiting to be witnessed. Like it was so clear after I read this book, I go back to it all the time. It's completely scribbled in. Um, it's like the first book on the top of my library because I just grab it all the time. So um, again, again, beautiful poetry. It's hard to have a book on grief and not in include poetry. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so the next one is another memoir. I literally just read that one and I was like, okay, this is, is the best. And again, it's these memoirs that she, Megan O'Roop, this is actually The Long Goodbye, by the way, before I go into it, The Long Goodbye, and it's a memoir of losing her mother. Um, there's a part really, again, we get into her story, but there's another part that's been really, really researched, and it, this is, it's, like, it just pierces you and moves you, and even though, you know, I haven't lost my mom to cancer, um, there's so many aspects that are relatable and human and um, just so complex, and I think the more, like, it's so specific, like, the way she talks about a family, all the different personalities, the way, their own way of processing grief, that too, there was so much insights to that, um, and I just, I love the way, like, her relationship changed, and, you know, because the way you see life change when you're just propelled into grief, um, and yeah, there was a lot, I was really impressed by the amount of research that, that she did. And, um, for me, after reading this book, I was like, oh, she, it was really an example of how, like, you're really on a quest, you know, and once you decide to take this journey, really allowing grief to move you and, um, to, to let it call you. And, and it's a, it's a it's a shirt it's a quest that you're on and that made it clear and also what was striking is that the work is just you know she realized like you know i could i could write like 10 more books about grief and still not be you know recovered um and it's a theme that runs through all these books it's like this is a lifelong thing you know and in my documentary that's something that i really reiterated was like that was a tragedy for me it's like i will have to live with this all my life you know and how can i do it so that i am not hijacked you know um and you know writing can take you you know so far uh, you got to live your life as too you know but i really this is i know it's not a poetry book she's known as a poet um but it's as moving as as reading poetry um yeah it's as moving and one last thing i'm going to say about this book is that you know she speaks about other ways you can engage with your loved one you know after they're gone how can you do that um and i always refer to you know my art and yoga in doing that and and it was really touching the way she was able to do that with her mom so i can't wait for you to read it so you know what it is All right, we got one, two, three. We got three more books. Rare Bird by Anna Winston uh, Donaldson. Rare Bird is the first book I ever read after Tom passed away. I was almost, oh God, seven or eight years. I can't count anymore. But, um, and um, she, Anna lost her son. Actually, it was really uncanny because she lost her son the same day that Tommy passed away. And that always really marked me. Um, and yeah, um, it's in the relig religious section books, like she's Christian, but it's really, it's, you know, I find these books, they're more about the humanity of it, not about the religion aspect of it. And um, I really, really appreciate this book in, you know, the shock of my grief and the, um, um, like I, I, I love the way she put it where we really idealize kind of the dead, right? Like once they're gone, it's like they were, they were perfect. And I love that even if it was her son and he was like nine years old, like she keeps saying over and again, you know, he, he had his flaws and he had, you know, he wasn't, I'm not going to start idolizing him now. And that was really poignant for me to read at such a, um, yeah, an early stage in, in my grief. Um, 
and um, you know it's the first one of the first book I read and I'm just gonna read one of the sentences here it says it's about being real and showing up in the pain and I think I really did that <laughs> I think I'm really still doing it but I think that's what you know I remember messaging her and she you know just like Kate who wrote uh the field guide to grief you know and they reply those authors replied to me like right away um so um there's an unspoken you know we're together in in grief you know uh we're our people and um her book really really helped me um yeah, so it was really like to show up in your pain, you know, nothing can be fixed and to move forward, you know, as you are. So very poignant, really good recommend. So it's called A Rare Bird, A Memoir of Loss and Love. Okay, so we got Broken Open. It's um, it's not a new book. It's by Elizabeth Lesser, who has written a lot, a lot of books. Another one that I love of hers called Marrow. And uh, Broken Open, It um, she made me love Rumi. She has like really great poetry of Rumi, but it's, you know, it's her story. Uh, there's a part that's called the Phoenix Process in it. It's like really her rising up from ashes. And her to like going from just maturing and you know having to grieve almost like our former lives of, of what she what she was. Um, Elizabeth Lesser is such an incredible teacher of grief um, and how to process it and you know how to integrate it. And she brings so much just wisdom of you know how to do that. And she managed to bring so much poetry and um practicality to uh you know how to do that and she's the one that really made it clear for me like i'll be walking in life with a broken heart like all my life there's no mending here you know and um, and to be proud of that to be proud of your scar and um they're what makes you human human and softer to the world and empathetic as well so uh, it's a it's a brave book and um one that really makes you kind of trust the path that you're on. All right, last but not least, option D by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant, who when it came out, it was like, did a huge, it was so big, it was a big buzz. I forget what year it was, maybe like four years ago, but I remember recommending it to a lot, a lot of people. Um, it's a practical book. I think like if you are not into poetry, it's not doesn't need to reach you and things like that. That book um, just really like lays it out really simple and you know accepting it in that um, it's in the again it's her story as well and it, it's um, and I love that you know Adam Grant is a, a psychologist in here and. So he kind of, it's like her story and he supports uh, everything that she's been through. And, you know, um, she, they made a point, I remember when I read that, like post-traumatic, um, she was like, you, instead of like going down after that, you, are, you actually thrive even more after going, living through such adversity. So I forget the exact term there, but I was like, oh my God, that's what happened to me, you know? Um, and also to me, that book really was about like an impressibility. Like we're not fragile because something happened to us actually like the complete opposite, you know? Um, that really, really for me spoke to that where, um, you can really, yeah, you can really thrive and, you know, your grief doesn't make you fragile, you know, it makes you, and I think it's confusing because, you know, you're like, yeah, they're broken and this and that, but I think because of that, because we have no more armor, I think we can just like be as we are and that's a really strong So there you have it, all my best book on grief. I hope that gave you a good review and that you'll at least pick up one or two and 
Let me know which one is your favorite. I'd love to know it in the comments. Share this with people you love, people that are grieving. And um, I'm sure.